All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Live with Purpose podcast. I am here with my friend, China. I jumped the gun because I'm just so excited <laughs> to be here. Uh, this podcast, if you are looking for purpose, as long as you are alive, you have purpose. Amen. And today, we're going to talk about ambition. Because uh, if you don't know, China's an ambitious hottie, period. <laughs> and she's here for all the ambitious hotties in the world. So that's what we're here to talk about is keeping ambition not only when you're exhausted and you need to keep going, but yeah. also like when things are going well. Because it's easy to get comfortable, huh? Don't get comfortable. Listen, you know that song by um by Lil Wayne? Yes, I can remember all the words. <laughs> Baby girl, don't you, there you go. ever there you go. get to... Comfortable, there it is. Comfortable. comfortable. Listen, y'all don't get comfortable, okay? <laughs> All right, but anyways, okay. <laughs> China, I'm so happy you're here. I'm happy to be here, Lisa. I love okay. you so much. I love you Guys, too. Lisa is like so awesome. <laughs> I'm definitely a Lisa fan, so like <laughs> you should be too. Thanks, girl. <laughs> I'm a China stand too. Uh, China is one of the most encouraging people I've ever met in my life, and I'm thankful for her in my life. So I wanted to have her here to encourage y'all. Because we all need encouragement. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. So, before we get too far into it, we already kind of started. But, mm-hmm. I want to know, like, what is something that, like, life has been teaching you lately? Oh, my gosh. One thing that life, specifically, you know, Jesus. Amen. Is teaching me is to fight. And I know that mm. sounds so weird it's for giving people to hear. It's giving nuck if you buck. And mm-hmm. I think it's so weird because oftentimes, as Christians, we really don't say oh yeah god gave me a word fight mm-hmm. like something like that it's normally like joy mm-hmm. be still, be still. <laughs> some stuff like that but for me i definitely think in this season he teaches me how to just fight fight for stewardship fight for my mm. dreams fight for things that i know that he's shown me yeah. so definitely this season is titled the fight i love that and child i'm fighting i literally. love that in every arena <laughs> No, I love that, because I think we get scared of fighting. Yeah. Because we're like, I don't want things to be difficult, but, like, that's okay. Yeah, and it's like, the thing is, once God gives you a picture or just, yeah, a picture of, like, what he's calling you to do, literally, you get addicted to that picture of, like, you know what, God, I know this is going to be ghetto getting here, Mm -hmm. but what you showed me is literally... 10 times better than anything that I could have thought that I could have imagined. Like, oh, it's going to be a terrible fight. Yeah. But I'm going to win because I have a father who cares about me and who wants me to win. So, hello. If y'all haven't noticed, the episode has already started. Oh, my gosh. China already started talking to y'all about how to keep going. Huh? (laughs) I love that. So, I want to know. Okay. So, you talked about that picture. Like, having that picture. How does one get that picture? Like, where do you get that from? I would say... You get that picture, and this is going to sound so, like, girl, that's all. You have to ask. Mm. I literally remember when I first got saved, I was just like, the first thing I said was, if you're the Jesus who everybody said you are, I literally said it just like that. Excuse my English. (laughs) But show me who you are and also show me who you want me to become. Hmm. And so then I remember one day, after just, like, praying and fasting, I literally got this picture Oh my gosh, I've never actually told people this out loud, so this is going to be like... I'm excited. An exclusive. Yeah, I got this picture of me in a pink suit, which is... (laughs) Here we are. (laughs) Here we are right now. It's happening. It's starting. I was in a pink suit, and there was a stadium filled with women from all nations, all tongues, like all different things. I don't know what I was talking about. I didn't get that deep into the picture. Or even... I don't know what it was. I just know that every time I see that, like... Whenever I'm going through something, I'm like, I remember that picture. Mm. And so I am going to sacrifice. I am going to be committed to constantly seeking God for him to give me more steps to that picture, if that makes yeah. sense. So if you want, I would definitely say if you want to know what God is calling you to, one, ask him. Ask him. Another thing is to also go and retrace your steps. Mm. So like, think about things like when you were younger that you've always liked to do. So for me, I was always in growing women business because I'm like, girl, I got the answers. And I was like, I always want another thing is I remember one time I was at one of my cousin's house. All the women, like the older women were at the table talking about something. Mm -hmm. And I was like downstairs playing with my cousins, came Mm -hmm. upstairs and I stopped and I said, oh, that's not working out because A, B and C. And of course I got kicked downstairs. But now that I'm older, I'm like, I've always had a love for helping women 
literally be ambitious and get to the next level of their lives. So just literally retrace your steps of being like, like for you, for example. Uh oh. You probably always love to talk. You probably always love to encourage. Like certain mm-hmm. things, you literally have to retrace your steps to like. Because mm-hmm. like now we're doing the things that we literally thought about when we were younger. So it's like, oh my gosh. So retrace your steps, sweetie. Okay. That's so good. And also, you're right. Definitely. You, I was one of those kids, and I feel like you're one of these kids, too. Did you get in trouble for talking? Yeah, all the time. In school? I always got to see. And I'm like, social skills, Miss Girl. I was going to say, first of all, that's important. Like, that's what I need to make it in life, first what? of all. Listen. Um, but no, I agree with the tracing your steps yeah. thing. Because I think God has been giving you clues the whole time. The whole time. It's just you have to be, to your point, just ask. It's like being curious about yourself. Yourself. And being curious about what God has said about you and told you. Yeah. Cause he said it. He yeah. ain't like he won't be hiding. I think that's the thing. It's like we be hiding, but he don't. He don't. Yeah, and he's consistent. Mm-hmm. So it don't matter how far you decide to not speak or you decide to let the enemy shut you down. He's literally always gonna be like, "Well, Lisa, <laughs> I told you to do this. So like, my vision for your life is not changing. So mm. just have fun, do whatever you know. Because you're always gonna end up coming back and being like, God, I don't feel like um, I have purpose. I don't feel like this. I don't feel like that. It's because literally you're not." talking to the person who mm. created you to do those things wow so that's so good mm. so when things get like hard so i have the vision now mm-hmm. but like i can't see how to make it happen i'm like okay now what like that vision of you in the pink suit yeah. like there are steps to get there but it's like trying to find those steps where do you find like the ambition the push the drive to like find the next step i would say honestly to one, I'm always going. This is always something I'm always going to stick with is going back to God yeah. and being like, and Lisa knows I'm famous for saying this. This is ghetto. <laughs> this is ghetto. Like God, what's going on? And always circling back with Him, but then also making sure that I'm mastering the level that I'm at. So at this current level, am I even doing a good job at the job that He's giving me right now? Mm. Am I even a good friend, a good sister? Like, okay, I know that one day He's going to have me ministering to a large group of women. Am I even ministering to the girls around me? Wow. Like, am I even... So just definitely making sure that you're stewarding what he gives you, if that makes sense. Because how's he going to give you more if I can't even master... And that goes with finances, too, because this is a little tangent. Because that's something I'm struggling with right now. It's like, go. I'm with the millions, but I can't even steward what I got right now. So I'm just working on that. And that principle applies to literally everything that mm-hmm. God gives you. So that's definitely how you just push through when you know that he called you to do something. But that middle, you just can't figure out. It's like, okay, I'm going to master the middle and make sure I'm dominating the middle. So then when the next thing comes, it'll be, you'll be ready for it. That's great. I am um, talking to, talking about stewardship of what you have now. Mm-hmm. We were, a few of me, me and some friends were in this like big house, mm-hmm. all these rooms, all this stuff. And we're like, how do you, like, how does one keep this house clean? Chill. My little one bedroom apartment. Only certain rooms are clean. Lisa, right I now, still live with my parents. <laughs> Yo. <At> my room? <laughs> <laughs> no, literally. Please. And that's the thing. It's like, God, I want the mansion. I do. But I can't keep this clean. <laughs> Yo. Like, why are you going to give me a mansion to keep clean when I can't keep this clean? Listen, you know? Yeah. That's the hard part. And then I think that's the thing in every area of life. Life. So like yeah. you said, it's like mastering where you at. Like. You know, we all want to be in a relationship, don't we? Huh? Period. You're trying to get there. Period, period. I have a friend who just got engaged. Amen. Literally, I was out my skin excited for her. Yay. And like, yeah. I think, and there was just this high level of joy that people around her had and that yeah. she has. Oh, amen. But it's like, also like, because we know she was in the single season yeah. stewarding, yeah. Work, praying, you know what I mean? Believing. Oh, yeah. But also like, still being the baddie God created her to be. Like, you know what I mean? Without waiting for the man, without waiting, right? It was amazing, Uh, literally. I love stories like that. Yeah, Yeah. and it's like, also like, I don't know. This is kind of a tangent. This is a side note in the grander conversation. We'll get back to the point. How do you feel about people popping up and gauge? First of all, Lisa. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's the vibe now. Lisa, you know me. I think it's great. You know me. So So you're going to pop up. (laughs) What? (laughs) Baby. Yo. I probably pop up married. (laughs) Yo, all the way back. I'm going to hit the Easter Easter Ray on Literally. Yeah, I'm going to my wedding dress. It's my wedding dress. I God willing, I'll be doing that in Vogue. I think she was in Vogue. I can't remember. I think so. It was yeah, a big magazine. It was a big mag. But I said, listen, if you're going to pop out, you better let pop it be out in like Vogue. This. I love that. <laughs> I love, because that's, I love a soft launch though. Yeah. I, okay. So I feel like for me, 
it's two sides. Mm-hmm. I, I would love to soft launch. Mm-hmm. I feel like one side of me is like, soft launch. And the other side is like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Issa Rae it now. <laughs> I, love I don't know. It. God willing, when the time comes, um, we'll see. That's so good. But I think, okay, let's try to tie it back to what to we're ambi- talking yeah, about. Yeah, no, but I'm, yeah. Yep, go ahead, tie it. No, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I just really, it popped into my head, and I wanted to ask. I was thinking about that earlier today. It could also go back to like soft launching with ambition. Some people are like, okay, so I have this dream. I have mm-hmm. this vision mm-hmm. that God's given me. Should I tell anyone? Wow. Should I? So even like, for example, I just told y'all a top secret thing about me being the lady in the pink suit. Yeah. Some people might be like, oh my gosh, you shouldn't have said that out loud. Cause what if it's not going to happen? Then I'm like, babes, I got the vision. I don't care. What any, I don't care what any pray, prayers that you're praying against it or any right. type of mess the enemy sends. I saw what I saw, and I know it was God. Because mm-hmm. I got confirmations after. So I just want to know your thoughts on that. Like, do you? What is your stance on like when to share a vision, if you should share a vision, and yeah. I think that's tough because we're all growing, yeah, and developing, mm-hmm. and sharing something when you're so sure of it, but you're not fully developed, developed. is scary. Yeah, that's good. And you don't even know you're doing it when you're doing it because you think yeah. you're so sure about it. Yeah. So I think there's a difference between sharing a long-term vision yep. and sharing what you're currently going, going through. Because yeah. I think, like we always say this thing, you know, you, sh- you share your scars, not your wounds. Yep. But that comes with good news, too. I agree. Like, because if we share things too soon, suppose, like, you're like, my man, my man, my man, right? All public about it, but it don't work out in six months. Because especially it depends on who you are. Because we also have to remember, like, what level of influence do you have? There's people where, like, if it's just your, not even, this isn't a bad thing or a good thing, but, like, if it's just your immediate fa- immediate mm-hmm. circle, it's a different level than if, like, you have a platform of 50 million people and following you. And they met all you. my men. Yeah. No man. Literally. No and then, not, and, but also, like, when you have that platform, people look at you as, like, this beacon of hope. Yeah. So it's, like, you have to be aware of the platform you have yeah yeah. and i think even if you don't have a big platform you still have a platform yeah there are people there's always people watching everybody has a certain level of influence i don't think we really pay attention to that or know that but there are people who follow you on instagram who are looking up to you who are not not in a malicious way but watching your every move and it's Mm -hmm. like wow like if lisa can do it i can do it if China can do it, I can do it. So yeah. I am very cautious of that, of like, be careful what you post and stuff yeah. because I don't want to be in that situation where it's like, China posted five boyfriends <laughs> in the past two years. Or mm-hmm. We've seen YouTubers, things like that. And yeah. You're like, babe. Yeah. Just keep Or I could have told you that one earlier. Like, you know what I mean? Like I knew that in video too. <laughs> and, but that's the thing though. But if you are, I think if you're bold enough to share the process, you need to share the whole process. Yes, I agree. So when the breakup happens, you're like, listen, y'all didn't work out. Huh? Like, yeah. and that's easier to do when it's not like 50 million people. people. And yeah. it's just like your immediate family, your immediate friends. Yeah. So like, that's why I said almost like I would share things, but like to what level? Like, yeah. are we soft launched until engagement? Or is it like, I've also been thinking like, if you don't post all your life now, you don't need to start when you get a boyfriend. I agree. I, yeah. Yeah. Maybe on the, I think the stories is a perfect place. 24 hours. If y'all didn't see it, y'all missed it. Wait until the next date. You know what I'm saying? I think this is a great topic though, in regards to like ambitious women. Cause I feel Mm -hmm. like sometimes as ambitious women, people are always like, are you dating though? Like we could talk about business. Oh my gosh. We could talk about ministry. We could talk about all the things. Yeah. But somebody's always going to bring up your relationship status. Cause yeah. I remember one time I was on live about prayer. Cause I had released my prayer journal. Mm-hmm. We were talking about prayer. And so, you know, like on Instagram, like drop the questions. I dropped the questions. All of the questions <laughs> were about my relationship status. That's like, crazy. Yeah. Boyfriend. What are you like? What's dating like? And I'm like, guys, I'm not the singleness minister. Right. I never <laughs> up to do that. I'm here to pray with y'all. I just want to talk about prayer. Mm-hmm. I have friends. I have amazing friends who are called to those arenas. I repost their pages. I send y'all there. Stop asking ambitious women who are not called to those arenas about their business. That's good. Like, why does a why does being an ambitious woman always have to be? What's your relationship status though? Oh, you wrote a prayer journal and you have a podcast. But how's your love life going? Yeah. Are you gonna buy these journals? <laughs> like, so that's something. So if you are an ambitious woman who like 
just bogged down people asking about your relationship status. God's timing is the best. It's perfect. And tell them to, what's a nice way to say, mind your business. I don't know. Just mind your business. Just tell them to mind their business in Get a very holy business. way. Yeah, in a very holy way. Yeah. It's not fair. You're like, what? Yeah, and I also think it's so weird that it's like, obviously the same thing doesn't happen to men. Yeah, no. You know? No, not at all. And it's annoying. Yeah, <laughs> 100%. Because nobody asks me, where's your wife? Or like, why yeah. you know? It's like, no, for girls, well, it's like, well, you know, China. You'll be 30 soon. Mm. I'm like, okay. And? And what? Mm. I don't understand. Mm-hmm. Help me. I love what does that. that mean? So do you think there's a such thing as being too ambitious? I feel like there are... So no, I do not. Mm-hmm. But I do think there are two different types of ambition. So okay. I think there's godly ambition, and I also think there's ungodly ambition. So for me, ungodly ambition is when I'm willing to pay any price. Mm. Like, not a price that God told me to pay, but like any, like I'm willing, like, I saw that vision, I'm willing to kill, steal, and destroy for it, if mm. that makes sense. Yeah. Like, I'm willing to sell my soul, I'm willing to sell out God, I'm willing to do anything for it. I feel like that's what I'm kind of like, yeah, I'm not interested. Like, there's certain things, I've been in certain situations where I've had things just come across my desk or whatever, of like, hey, you want to do this? I'm like... Uh-uh. Yeah. No, it's it's giving it's giving witchcraft real bad. Okay. I just don't want to be involved in that. Right. And being able to like stand ten toes down in that. So I do think too ambitious, no. But you just always have to make sure that the things you're doing, God stamped. That's good. Because why are you doing stuff he didn't stand? You wasting your time, and now you got a demon following you around because you want to play in witchcraft. So I'm okay, like, listen, watch out for them demons. Um, yeah, I don't. It's a that. it's a very real thing, and I think like recently like american christianity has come around to like hey we should tell people about these things yeah because people are tired it's like babes mm-hmm. like you burning you doing all this stuff mm-hmm. and your life is still a shambles right so it's like Yo. i mean is it really working for you because here's the thing another thing that you need to say you know i've always been a big advocate for is god does call all of us to different things yeah so like for me i do feel like i'm called to like entertainment media culture you know i do all the things that the girls love yeah and for me there's even sometimes i have to be like okay china there's gonna be a point where you're gonna really have to make decisions of being like i can't work with you sorry yeah. like and finding of course nice ways to say that or having to turn down things because it's just i'm not willing to sacrifice a good father yeah for a couple of dollars that may be you know a big check or something right but yeah or like people who are called to like politics people who are called to like business like there gonna be people doing janky deals and you're gonna have to be literally the light in the room of being like yeah we're not signing that yeah sorry it's two million five billion whatever yeah no i'm good and yeah. god will you know worry about you on the back end make sure you period because he's yeah I think that's so good, basically, what you talked about with godly ambition, that that doesn't just apply to, like, people who want to work in a church or people who work in ministry. Like, godly ambition comes from being a Christian and believing in him. And I love that you touched on that. Like, some people are called to entertainment. Some people are called to politics. Because it's just, we can't get so bogged down in thinking the only thing that God has his hand on is, like, ministry. Yeah. Because... Like, literally, that wouldn't that doesn't speak to who he is. Who he is. Like, he is literally all-encompassing, all-knowing, everything. Yep. So, if we're so focused on, oh, well, he's only at church. Yeah. If he's only at church, he only going to be at church for you. <laughs> like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, that's the only area you acknowledge him in. Yeah. Like, that's the only place you're going to see him at. Yeah. But it's so. like, if you acknowledge him, like, okay, God, as I go into this situation... What do you need me to do? Yeah. Because I think that is part of what helps you keep drive, too. If you know, okay, I am here on assignment. On assignment. Yeah. Like, I am here to do something that God has called me to do. Sometimes, like, I went to a workout class today. I was like, God, do you want me to go? Because I'm not necessarily interested yeah. in, like, being really tired and sweating and all that. <laughs> and he was like, you should go. And I said, fine. Had a great time. Yeah. Good people. Good laughs. All that good stuff. Made a few jokes. You know me. <laughs> um, but it was fun. But... While I was there, it was like starting to fade. And I was like, I need, I need to make it spiritual. I need, <laughs> I need him to come in here because I don't want, I, I'm starting to fade. And it's just like, if we do that more, yeah, like it gives us the push that we need in like every space yeah. to finish a workout. Something as simple as like, literally you ever had like in the, in the beauty shop, you ever had him with you? 
He like, always has to be with me because he's following me. Listen, I listen. I'm, I'm not stealing a thing. Listen, so yeah, no, especially the beauty supply. He be there with me. The beauty supply. He be keeping you a check. Yeah, because I'm like. For me, one time I was at um, I think I was at Ulta, mm-hmm. and I like was trying to pick a shade, mm-hmm. and I was like, God, I don't know what shade to pick. And he was like, Pick that one. I said, Okay. Oh Got home. It matched perfectly. It matched. But imagine I bought the wrong because I was gonna pick the other one. Uh, imagine I came home and be like, well, here we are. What you just made me think about that shade scenario you just brought up. Made mm-hmm. me think about how important ambition and obedience is. Oh come on! So literally, if you would have picked the wrong shade, you would have been mad mm-hmm. that the shade don't match. You got to step out the house. Like let's say you had somewhere to go, you was in a hurry. And you had to use that shade, and it's like ten times lighter <laughs> than my I mean? actual face. Yeah. But yeah. just thinking, like for ambitious people, how important obedience is. That's so good. Because if you're not obedient with what he told you, it's gonna be hard. So it's like a domino, kind of. Like, yeah. If you mess up, of course God he course corrects. So right. it's not like a real, real game of dominoes. It's just like mm-hmm. a little baby game of dominoes because mm-hmm. he'll put you back up and then put him back in order. Mm-hmm. But let's just say, for example, playing dominoes. If I don't make sure that domino one falls the way it needs to fall, it's going to mess up the rest of my dominoes. Yeah. And obedience is like children of Israel. Mm. It took y'all all that time to get somewhere. That was only supposed to take 11 days, yeah. babes. I was circling, wasn't you? And now a whole lot of complaining wasn't there. And then a whole lot of complaining, a whole lot of circling. And then when you sent spies out to see what was up, your self-esteem, your confidence was yeah. so shot that you said they see us as grasshoppers. Them giants ain't probably say a word to them. How are you going to come back and say they saw us as grasshoppers? It's like, no, literally that 40 years chipped away at the things that God literally put inside of you. Confidence, ambition, wow. all those things. But you too busy dabbling in stuff you're not dab- supposed to be dabbling in, not being obedient. And now, where's yeah. your confidence? Shot. Yeah. Self-esteem? Shot. Like, so that just you that that also story yeah that was that's good, good. That that's was good. good wow i love that because the obedience is just the key to like everything literally everything yeah. involves obedience yeah 100 percent. okay so let's say i'm on a good path i'm okay. doing well You're doing well like i'm crushing it at my level like we talked Period. about now what like i'm like i'm starting to get content because it's like you know what um that pink suit can wait I feel yeah, good she, here. She's cool, yeah. Right. And it's like, I have everything I need. Like, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. How do you get the ambition back? How do you get it back? One, also understanding. There's always a next level of glory. So, baby, yeah. um, you can't just be... You on level 10. You don't want to mm-hmm. go to level 30. So, mm-hmm. even asking God, like, okay, I'm good. Am I too comfortable right here? Wow. Well. Can you send me a sign, send me a mentor, send me somebody or send me some exposure as far as like seeing something that makes that wants to put that battery pack back in my pack, like in my back Mm -hmm. of just literally asking like, yo God, like, I feel like I'm too comfortable here. Mm -hmm. Like shake it up a little bit. Ask him because he's probably like, you're too comfortable because you didn't do the last 10 things I told (laughs) you. So now you're claiming you're content. Yeah. But you're really just settling because you're scared to actually do what you need to do. So I would say if you feel like, Life is going so swell. Everything's perfect. Mm, I don't really want that pink suit no more. Ask yourself why. Because if you've been dreaming about this particular thing for years, then all of a sudden, you're like, oh, the pink suit can wait. I feel like that's a red flag. Yeah. More so than anything. That's so good. mm. Because there's a difference between being content and complacent. Right, exactly. I think that becomes complacent. Complacent. Being complacent, to me personally, is a red flag. Mm. Because how do you go from being super ambitious to all of a sudden... Like, is it something somebody said? Is it a project didn't go the way you thought it was going to go? Is it you didn't get a brand deal that you thought you were going to get? Is it, like, what made you go? Literally a light switch. What made you go from on ambition to complacent? Like, there had to yeah. be something. And you may not, sometimes we're just so busy, like, moving, moving, that we didn't even take the time to do self-assessments. Yeah. Like, being like, dang, when so-and-so told me X, it really actually broke my heart and I didn't realize that it broke my heart. So now I'm complacent mm. and I decided that my dreams aren't worth chasing anymore. Wow. So that's like, yeah. that's so good. I think, cause I think I got to that place a few months ago. I don't mm-hmm. remember how many months ago, but I was like, things are going really well. Like I got the job that I prayed yeah. for. Like I'm doing really well at that job. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't she's until, really good, y'all. She, thanks she, gosh. She's good. Thanks girl. Um, but like, 
because I was doing well and because I had what I prayed for, mm-hmm. I was like, well, I feel fine. Mm-hmm. That's enough. And then he yeah. was like, is it though? Is it? Because yeah. it's like, you know, you're not fully where mm-hmm. I've showed you you could be. And also, you're ne- like, yes, work is nice, but what about all these other million uh-huh. things you have called you Come to? Come on, Lisa. Listen, what about, like, not e- and not even just talking about work. What about your health? Come on. What about your finances, like we talked about yeah. earlier? What about just you? Period. Literally the other day, a pastor was preaching about, like, how Jesus isn't everybody. Yep. And how to be nice to everybody, be kind yep. to everybody. And I was like, God, I feel like I'm pretty good to other people. He was like, you are but you're not that good to yourself, and I'm in you. I said, first of all, ooh. and I immediately started bawling, ooh, obviously. <laughs> yeah, because, ooh, child. Ooh. Yeah, it was so good. And I was just like, yo, like, not being ambitious is a disservice to yourself. And others, too. Yeah, both. that's so good. It's both. Because they're like, people tied to what God has for you. Literally, like, you not flicking that domino is literally going to affect whoever you're called to. Like, yeah. Oh, at least you- what? like it's just one of those things of like back to the being kind to yourself for example you call me an encourager yeah i can encourage the people Uh-oh. i can speak life into the people yeah but when it's a friday at 6 30 mm-hmm. can't speak a lick of life into myself mm. and so it's just one of those things and similar to you god's like yeah like that's not cool yeah. you need to work on that you need to literally you need to be able to encourage yourself just as much as you honestly more than you encourage other people because how are you going to pour out encouragement when you don't have it inside of you that's so good like what that makes no sense so i'm trying to get myself together i get it and also like you know the bible say love your neighbor as yourself mm-hmm. and we read that we're like yeah i'm gonna love my neighbor but like because that as yourself part comes second mm, just, we forget that it is a prerequisite yeah. of loving your neighbor mm-hmm. so there it is there it is and that's all we have to say do you there have is. anything if someone was coming away from this like what is one thing you want them to know one thing i want you to know is to always bet on god first and then bet on yourself so mm-hmm. any dreams anything you have go for it because <laughs> realistically what's the worst that can happen that's good what's the worst thing ha- like okay it didn't work okay and Try something else like yeah. so definitely always bet on god no matter what and always bet on yourself Period. Period. I love that. I love it. I was about to say cheers, but I don't. <laughs> Sorry. We don't have any glasses. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. If people, so tell people where they can find you, where they can get in touch with you, follow you, all mm-hmm. that good stuff. Um, You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at China L. Johnson. China is spelled C-H-Y-N-N-A. And yep, Instagram and TikTok for now. I love that. Um, you can follow me at Lisa K Satchel on the Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, I also have a TikTok, but she doesn't be posting on it. But she's mm-hmm. gonna get better. Period. So uh, we'll be over there on that. And yeah, I appreciate you guys listening. I appreciate you guys hey. watching. We love you, yes. and we're so thankful for you, China. I'm so thankful for you. I love you, Lisa. So and I'm much. so thankful for you coming. Love Ooh, you. Love you too. That's Y'all it. subscribe, <laughs> like, repost five stars five stars whatever else the girlies be doing <laughs> y'all lisa is definitely just so amazing and y'all about to get her now because uh-huh. in a few years the way god about to blow this thing up period. you gonna wish she was a part period <laughs> i love it okay bye y'all